last year, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the honor and the privilege to perform Hajj. And then from Hajj, from there, we flew over to Jordan. So when we reached Amman, Jordan, we went there with the intention of going in to Palestine. So from there, we jump onto a bus and we head in. And as you get to the borders, you see the Israeli flag stands extremely high. And subhanAllah, automatically, your heart starts to beat. You know, because hearing is not like seeing. So you enter this place and you go through this whirlpool of emotions. Some of it is anger, some of it is fear, some of it is frustration. So you get to the borders and keep in mind you're an Australian. You got an Australian passport and you get there. And wallahi, from as soon as you see them for the first time, it's like something enters the heart. It's like a, it's, 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 it's like a poison enters the system. And from as soon as, yani, as soon as you make contact with them, no smiles, no welcomes, no nothing whatsoever, you're automatically made to feel like an outcast. So you get to the border there, they take you off the bus, you walk in and you sit for an hour, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you haven't been questioned yet. You're an Australian that wants to go in and you haven't been questioned yet. And as you sit and you watch, you'll see a Palestinian citizen, an old senior man, a man who we, yani we might call Ammar or Hajj or, or, or yani an old man at least at the age of 70, 75 years of age. And you see a young Israeli soldier, a female, maybe about 18 years old, 19 years old talking down at him, giving him orders. Wallah al like he's an animal. Like he's, yani, like he has no value, no worth, nothing whatsoever. Talking down at him, full like, yani, if you could call it talking, it was more like barking, right? And you feel it. Wallah al you feel it. And you sit there and you bite your tongue. And this is a Palestinian. This is an old man who is supposed to be receiving some sort of respect and he's been spoken down at by a little 18 year old. Anyway, so you sit there and then eventually they call your name and then, uh, and then, then a young lady. And don't think it's a coincidence that they're ladies. It's not a coincidence that they're ladies. Then a young lady will come over, she calls you out, and then you gotta follow her. You walk into the room, you sit down. Who are you? Why are you here? And then she starts to ask, why have you come to Palestine? And what, sorry, they call it Israel. But uh, 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 why are you here? What business do you want from here? Why do you choose to come here? Why didn't you just go straight home? Full on, full on. And this can carry on. She'll talk to you for about half an hour. Then she'll tell you to go back and then you see an hour, two hours, three hours. Then she'll come back. She'll call you back out. She'll ask you the same questions again. Then she'll send you back. Then you sit down for an hour, two hours and then another. And then someone else will come and call you out. And then they'll also ask you the same questions. Then you'll go back and then you sit for an hour and for two hours. Until eventually you lose whatever love and whatever desire you had to go in is lost. And then they tell you come in. That's if they tell you come in. And then from as soon as you walk in, you can feel the oppression. You travel on their roads and for kilometers on end, concrete high walls for kilometers and kilometers and kilometers separating. And then when you reach their suburbs, the concrete walls, they start to have paint and artwork so that it doesn't look as intimidating. And then you get there and then you want to enter the Quds, the Holy Mosque. And it's surrounded by Israeli soldiers. So you come to walk in, you got to show your passport, proof of ID. And there's a man there, an Israeli, holding a fully automatic weapon. And I need to justify myself to him to why I need to enter the Masjid of Allah. <coughs> anyway, so you walk in, you show your ID, you go in there and you walk into the Quds. And wallahi, it's like the walls are crying. 
there's no youth because they don't allow them. No youth. You walk in and they have a stand, a glass stand with a collection of bombs, grenades, shells, things that have been fired into the masjid over the period of years. You look at the shells made in the USA. Anyway, so you pray Aisha and maybe now you're thinking maybe I'll stay and make some dua. Make... No, you can't stay brother. Why? Because they've got to lock up the masjid. 9.30, everyone's got to get out. But who does the final inspection? They do. Do you think they honor the masjid and take their shoes off? They walk in. And while all this is taking you, you can absolutely say nothing. And then you speak to the local and you tell him, how come, you know, like, how come they like, where's all the Muslims? How come there isn't more people? He tells your brother, I have to show my passport and my ID five times before I reach the doors of the masjid. This is a citizen. He has to show his ID and his passport five times before he can reach the masjid. And if he forgets it, so let's just say he's forgotten, right? He can get charged. He can, he can, he can, he falls, he falls, he falls into harm. You imagine in this country, you cannot possibly, like, you cannot travel from Lakemba to say, Say Lakemba to Dawichu. Say from Lakemba to Dawichu. You get stopped twice. This is for the citizen, never mind the tourist. The citizen, his own country, he gets stopped twice. And twice he has to stop, prove who he is, get out of the car. If his wife is with him, she also has to get out of the car. The car's got to get inspected every single day. And if this brother has to go to Dawichu twice, three times, four times, it's the same guard. He's seen him. He's seen him the first time. He's seen him a couple of hours ago. Him, his wife, his kids have to get out of the car and they have to inspect. But it gets worse. It gets worse. So we're traveling along the highway and you see this beautiful land of Palestine. And in the midst, you see this odd object, this object that has nothing to do with the surroundings. And it's a, um, it's a container, just a container that's sitting in the middle of bush. You think, how did that possibly get there? You know what it is, brothers? It's Palestinian land that some Jewish person puts his container on there, but it doesn't do anything. And it sits for a month, two, three, a year, two years, until it becomes normal to you. Until the Palestinians no longer question the container. And then what does he do? He builds a house there. It's become his land. That blunt, and it's not, uh, it's blunt, bluntly. And you see these little containers everywhere. And you see these little containers everywhere. My time is almost up, you know, I'll, 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 I'll share just a few things with you. When we went to Masjid Al-Khalil, that's where our Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, is buried. This isn't, yani, I'm not trying to put spices here. To sp this is history, you can look it up. Masjid Al-Khalil was a masjid that belongs to the Muslims. In 1994, Salat Al-Fajr, the Muslims were there praying Salat Al-Fajr. A Jew from the States, a doctor, walks in and opens fire to the Muslims that were praying. While in sujood. Kills 30 and wounds 125. So what do you think happened? I'll tell you what happened. They closed off the mosque. They made an investigation. You know what the result of the investigation was? They turned half of it into a synagogue. And this, whatever you want to call him, his grave became a shrine. And extremist Jews used to go there and make pilgrimage at his grave. A hero. You know, my brothers, wallahi, 
when you visit Palestine, it's not like hearing about it and seeing it on TV. You see the oppression in the eyes of the Muslims. Wallahi, you see it. And you can see in their eyes that they've given hope in the Muslims. Wallahi, there are so many, so many experiences that I wish, that I wish I could share with you, but my time is short. But finally, the reality is, is that they want you to forget about Palestine. And that's the truth. They don't want you. They don't want your money. They don't want your tourism. They want nothing. You and this place needs to finish. And so long as this place is not in the eyes of the Muslims, it's not in the hearts of the Muslims, then for them this is good. Have you ever asked yourself, why is it we know so little about Palestine? I'll end with this. This, this was a request of the Imam of Masjid Al-Quds. He said to me, please go back and tell the youth of Islam to come and visit this place. He said, come and visit. And Wallahi understand that what's happening in Palestine is very real. Very, very, very real. Jazakallah khairan.